This week on Case BY, we learn about Operation Kindness record breaking year. Meet a CHS student with a unique job. And hear about an athlete who's turned a disappointing injury into a fresh start. Case BY starts, starts now. now. Hi, and welcome to the 13th episode of Case BY. I'm Shania Khan. And I'm Landon Flesher. We start off today learning about a new curriculum which enriches student experience in and out of the classroom. Claire speaks to the teacher who pioneered the program and a student who benefits from it. While learning in the classroom proves to be influential, kids in both Miss Barnes' Earth and Space Science and Astronomy classes have been given the opportunity to broaden their horizons outside of the classroom. Whether that's visiting the planetarium in Arlington or watching NASA webcasts, students can choose two assignments of their choice each nine weeks. The reason why I decided to do flex options in my classes um, originally was because there were so many different things that I found online that I wanted to share with my classes and then finally decided I'll just throw these all, you know, on a document and let them choose which ones they want to do and make them optional, but required. And um, it kind of grew from there. Miss Barnes' desire to help her students learn what they are passionate about has allowed her students to expand their knowledge and take advantage of parts of the world around them that they would have never known about before. Mrs. Barnes' flex options provide a different and unique opportunity of learning outside the class that in my opinion is uh, more interactive than just taking notes and lecturing. One of Miss Barnes' students, Sam Silver, has taken both Earth and Space Science and Astronomy, so she has participated in many flex assignments over the past two years, which has only grown her knowledge in these courses, as well as her relationship with her peers and Miss Barnes. The more I went with more of my friends, the more I realized how fun and interesting it was, and getting to know my classmates outside of school was a really cool part of that. It helps me bond with my students because I see them outside of school and it helps them bond with each other. They have common interests and we're doing things that extend beyond the classroom walls. For KCBY, I'm Claire Clement. That was such a creative take on hands-on learning. Now let's go to Vinny to hear about all the things going on around CHS in the coming weeks. This past Friday, Coppell High School hosted the Academic Decathlon. Coppell came out on top, winning regionals with a score of 46,131. Marcus High came in second with a very close score of 45,518. And finally, Hebron placed third in the region with their score of 44,340. When compared to the state, Coppell placed eighth, leaving with Doulis as the winning state team with their score of 49,753. Congratulations to all those who competed. This Monday, January 29th, marks a stricter enforcement of the lanyard policy. Administrators and teachers will now be giving out campus punishments for those who are not wearing them around their necks. So don't forget to wear your lanyards. Have you signed up for your classes yet next year? Online course registration will also be closing on the 29th. So be sure to lock in your classes for next year. Thanks, Vinny. I'll be sure to bring my lanyard on Monday. We'll be back after these short messages. In life, it's good to be informed on what's currently going on around you. With the Coppell Student Media app, you can explore Psychic's latest issues of school news, sports, student life, and much more. Watch full episodes of KCBY, plus live updates from CSM's social media accounts. Download it today and get your mobile edition of the CSM app. Coppell Student Media, where the news comes to you. With the recent Me Too movement, women's rights have been a huge topic of discussion in both pop culture and the news. This put the Women's March held close to home in Dallas and around the country this past Saturday even further in the limelight. Rachel brings us more. 
This Saturday marked the one-year anniversary of the Women's March on Washington that took place last year. The Dallas March attracted over 17,000 people. We talked to two students who attended the march to get their view on the experience. Um, it was very empowering. Um, everyone was super welcoming. Uh, There's all types of people there. I was very surprised at the turnout. Um, it was super fun. It's amazing because like you read like your eight push textbook and it talks about like all these people who protested important things and there's like pictures of them and just like knowing you're a part of something like that and like actually making a change is like an incredible feeling. Basically I just believe in equality so that's what everyone there was advocating for. Equality for all types of women and I think everyone should have the same rights in this country so. This takeaway is that like change and like protesting something and like standing up for yourself can be like so uncomfortable and like something um, you don't want to do but like it's so important and there's so much weight in just being able to like stand up for yourself and stand up for things that you know are right. Thanks Rachel. Now it's me to CHS Senior whose love for acting has driven her to pursue a unique opportunity. Maddie learns more about Macy Johnson and a role she has taken to pursue her dreams. We are going to have such fun together. I'm going to make you... When listening to the voice of the dreadful doll in the video Do game Smite, it may sound familiar. Try not to cut yourself. That's because it's none other than Maisie Johnson, a senior at CHS. Since 2014, she's found a passion in a different kind of theater, voice acting. My first voice acting job was in a video game. It was a one-off character but I had auditioned online at the studio for months and I finally got it and I was so excited. It was like one of the happiest times I've ever felt. Macy has now starred in numerous video games, including Paladins and TV shows such as Konohana Katan. But voice acting has awarded her with more than just roles. It has also given her a newfound confidence. It's been a good thing for her in the sense, I think um, once an actor gets a gig, it gives them that confidence. And I think um, more so it's given her, you know, confidence in what she does and what she does in auditions and all of that. I think that's really helped her grow in her confidence, not just in theater, but also outside of school, in meeting people, starting conversations. I've seen her really grow. In the future, Macy plans on continuing to pursue her love for acting, both on the stage and in the studio. I'm going to Baylor next fall and I'm going to get a degree in theater. I want to keep auditioning as much as I can. And I think the biggest thing is making connections with people and learn more aspects of the field. Acting has given me all the confidence in the world and I love it so much. This is your last chance to purchase your yearbook. The deadline is February 2nd, so head to jostens.com to purchase yours. Now let's move to a heartwarming story of a local shelter who has recently broken records and made a huge difference in the lives of our furry friends. Emily finds out more about the organization. Operation Kindness, the largest no-kill animal shelter in North Texas, has since broken their adoption record in 2017, with 4,889 adoptions and 5,090 animals who received care. 2017 was a prime year for Operation Kindness. So I've been working with Operation Kindness for the past two summers, and I really just enjoy their entire vibe and how they treat their dogs, and especially the fact that they're a no-kill animal shelter. I love that about them. Operation Kindness has saved the lives of nearly 95,000 homeless animals and continues to impact the community each and every day. The best part about working in Operation Kindness is the match between a pet that, or an animal that was discarded or homeless and hooking them up with a family uh, that's going to love them forever. Uh, the feeling we get when an animal gets adopted is, is we call it happy sad. With this impact in our community, we only hope for another record-breaking year. We didn't actually think we were going to get a dog. We thought we were just going to go look. But they told us that the dog, the puppies there don't usually stay there for very long. A lot of people adopt them really fast. He's made me feel more responsible, I guess. Yeah, he's made me look more responsible for sure. Knowing that I have to feed him and walk him and mm -hmm. it's been a nice experience. <laughs> for KCBY, I'm Emily Durenzo. Thanks for watching. Now let's go to Hannah with CSPN. Hi, I'm Hannah Sigler and this is CSPN.
This Tuesday, your Capo Cowboys basketball team took on the Jesuit Rangers in the arena. Here's Kennedy with your weekly sports wrap-up. This past Tuesday, the Coppell Cowboys took on the Jesuit Rangers at home. Coppell was aggressive early in the first quarter. They were able to lock up defensively in the second quarter, only allowing seven points. This lead to the Cowboys holding a 30-17 to lead at halftime against the Rangers. They've got to play consistent like they played tonight. Uh, they had few turnovers that they, they have not had in the past. They usually have a lot of turnovers, and tonight they didn't. So they control the offense, and we continue to do that, play methodical and play careful. I think we'll have a good chance of contending for the title of the district. In the second half, the Rangers were able to come out, but despite their efforts, they were never able to overcome the gap as Coppa was consistently scoring off layups and free throws from Parker Rodman and Quavon Adger. We, we did a lot of things good this game. Whenever we played them at Jesuit, we, we had a lot of things to work on. I think we just took care of them in practice, and I think we, I, th I think today we're solid. I don't think I think I think we did everything pretty well today. The game ended with a final score of 63-55 to as the Capo Cowboys now improve their record to 5-3. and three. Come out and support your Cowboys next week as they take on the White Longhorns at White. For KCBY, I'm Kennedy Walker. Jay Dempsey was a big part of this year's varsity football team, but in the wake of a devastating injury, he's proven to be a lot more than just a football player. Nick finds out more. Coppell High School junior Jay Dempsey has had a passion for football since he first stepped on the field in the second grade. Throughout this football season, Jay's passion and skill was displayed as he earned a spot as a starting outside linebacker for the Cowboys. In the final district game this year, Jay suffered from a reoccurring injury that ended his football career earlier than expected. About two weeks before our last district game, I started feeling kind of soreness in my lower back. Um, started doing a little bit of physical therapy, like in the training room and everything. Um, and then later on, it got a little bit worse. I was playing through it. Um, and then after that, I got an MRI and we figured out that I have three herniated discs in my lower spine. We went in just to see kind of the news of, um, well, you can still play with it. I mean, it's, it's a herniation, but you, you'll be fine. Um, when really he was saying, you know, that since you have three and they're very herniated and it's pressing on the nerve, um, potentially you could get paralyzed from playing. And so that's kind of the point where I realized, I looked at my parents and I kind of realized, you know, like football is not as important as being able to walk. After finding out that his injury would promptly end his playing days, Jay's faith played strong in helping him explore new passions. Jay's mom, Pam Erickson, shares how Jay's identity isn't reliant only upon football, but his faith and values. He is a God's plan kind of person, and he's just kind of like, well, this, this wasn't in the cards, and God did not have a plan for me to go, and, you know, he'd been looking at colleges, you know, Ivy League schools to play football, and he's just got such a positive attitude, and just growing from this, it's just like, well, you know, I, I worked hard, I had fun, I made friends, it was a great year playing varsity, it's been a great, you know, life of playing football, and now I'm going to move on, I'm going to try something different, and so we're blessed in that he, he doesn't define himself as Jay the football player. He's an athlete, he's a good kid, he's a Christian, he's um, smart, you know, it's not, thank goodness, I play football and that's all I do. Coach Eric De Los Santos, the linebackers coach for the Coppell Cowboys, has coached Jay since his freshman year and will not only miss the player on the field, but the person in the locker room. I'm just going to miss him as a kid. I mean, I loved being around him, you know, he brought some juice to practice all the time. Um, you know, it sounds weird, but the relationship we built, I think, was a strong one. Um, he's just a kid I knew I could always count on. Honestly, I was a little bit stunned at first, um, just because I had such a good season and everything, and I started getting looked at by a couple colleges, um, and so I kind of had this whole plan built up in my head um, of what I was going to do with my life throughout football and everything. Um, and so hearing that news kind of made it, like, all put into perspective on um, things in life are short, so you got to kind of just look at what you um, are doing in your life and cherish the moments that you have because not everything lasts. For KCBY, I'm Nick Boyd. Thanks for watching CSPN. Now back to Shania and Landon. Thanks, Hannah. The Cowboys basketball team takes on WT White tonight in the arena. Now to special features. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. So today, I'm going to be teaching you how to have the most aesthetically pleasing Instagram of all time. With my tips, you'll be sure to be on the Instagram Explore page in no time. So it's super important to shoot at really unique places. Um, I know this really underground coffee shop. I don't think anyone from Coppell knows about it, so yeah. 
So you gotta make sure you get like the right angle on your coffee. It doesn't matter if it gets cold because it's for the aesthetic. So you just gotta, you know, got it. So like a really popular thing that people do now is going roofing and most people do it in like downtown Dallas but honestly like you can just use your own roof. God, look at this view. Oh my, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. If you really want to up your quality on your Instagram, you can get an actual camera. I got mine for Christmas from my parents. I'm basically like a professional photographer now. Hey, what's your aperture at? Um, AF. If you want me to take your pictures. Wait, what's an ISO? I only charge like $100 an hour. Um, so yeah, I think my camera is like broken because all my pictures are turning out black. Thanks for joining us this week, CHS. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Baby, know that I come first, first, first. Baby, know that I.